Pixel as a company prides themselves as being the one stop platform with endless realities. They say Pixel is not just the most exciting and engaging extended reality content for enterprise, but they are the future of XR content distribution and management. Join me as we welcome Mr. Sean Hoetz, the CEO of Pixel. Hello, Sean. How are you? Hi. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm very excited to be part of the VRARA in MENA and present uh, more about Pixel. So I am the founder and CEO of Pixel. We've actually been around for almost uh, 10 and a half years now. So um, watching the space explode over the last four or five years is, is very exciting to us. We're, we're located in, in Royal Oak, Michigan. Um, and my personal background is really an entrepreneur. I've always looked for ways to leverage uh, emerging technologies to not only improve uh, operational operational efficiencies, but also improve lives, enhance lives, make things easier and better uh, leveraging technology. One of the companies I've owned in the past was a large landscape and snow removal company, and we were one of the very first companies to adopt uh, the Doppler radar, which actually showed where rain and snow was coming from all over uh, the state where our work crews were. And back in the in the 90s, that was uh, pretty, pretty innovative. So the company Pixo has a strong AAA gaming background. Um, we moved from console games to uh, mobile games with very early titles in the in the app stores, not only Apple, but uh, at the time, uh, Android wasn't even around yet. So um, we leveraged that that or, or continue to leverage that early uh, success and history in the in the app stores and with mobile gaming, specifically on the enterprise space with the Unreal and the Unity game engine. Um, with uh, uh, the Oculus Rift that came out in 2016, for us was an absolute uh, a game changer because you know, like I said, leveraging technology to improve lives or improve efficiencies. Um, we knew once we put that Oculus Rift headset on that we can replicate real life, which is something that was very difficult to do in the, in the mobile and, and the gaming space, even though we were using it to gamify experiences or for enterprise, but being able to um, immerse someone in a, a um, immersive, interactive, real life environment we knew could change people's feelings. So when we could make someone sad or happy or scared or excited, in a headset that was game changing for us. So, so if you believe the numbers that we get from the different uh, publications, they're very, very significant. The thing for us that's, that's most important really is, are we seeing uh, adoption? Are we seeing real life traction with things that, with, with our clients that we're focused on on a daily basis? So the reports are nice. The numbers are astronomical, they're huge. But what are we seeing on a day to day standpoint. One thing that we've seen for sure is dating back to 2016 when we would get what is VR training. We would pick up the phone, we'd be calling folks, you know, companies, hey, you know, we have this VR training solution and the response was what the heck is VR training? And if you fast forward to today, it's more about uh, how much can we purchase? Where do we start? How does it scale? How do we integrate? So the efficacy of VR or immersive training or XR content it seems more obvious now to the enterprise. Now it's how do we integrate? Where do we go from here? There's the three things that we, we ran into early on was, you know, how do I integrate? That was one big one. Um, we don't have enough content to, to adopt this new technology. And then um, also the uh, uh, hardware that prior, you know, in the prior years, they were tethered, they were connected to computers, they were more expensive, they were clunky, we were carrying around these big, uh, Pelican cases, and the fact is our customers did not want to do that. So we, we've resolved some of those um, issues with, with you know, smaller, cheaper, uh, um, uh, all-in-one headsets. Um, there's more content uh, coming, and we have a lot more experience in how to integrate into a large enterprise. So the outlook is very strong, but there still seems to be barriers that we're finding firsthand. <clears throat> so there's a bottleneck, what we consider a bottleneck. There's, there's still an, a demand for content, 
there is still a massive problem with a very large organization like Saudi Aramco. How do we provide access to the trainees? How do we distribute and how do we uh, uh, manage the content? Now we're talking XR, so AR, VR, MR, uh, 360 video, you have multiple different, many dozens probably different groups or divisions within a company like that. And how do I safely and securely provide access to those end users uh, without having to sideload um, or without it being too clunky? So still very difficult um, to scale across a large enterprise like that. So we, we know they want it, but how do they do it? So we here at Pixo have taken all that market data and we've developed and we are now very, very recently introduced Pixel Apex to the market. It's a revolutionary content distribution management and analytics platform that will change the way the world distributes and uses XR. Why? Because it's simple. Why? Because it's an end-to-end -end solution for an enterprise from beginning to end, from the content itself all the way down to distribution. So what Apex does, it provides access, easy distribution and management of all types of XR content, like I mentioned before, and it's one simple, secure, cloud-based platform. So the content, we, we look to how do we solve the content issue. If you take a, a very large global company, there's no way Pixel alone can develop all that content. So what we've done is we've gone out to third-party uh, uh, developers and publishers of content. We've provided them a way to upload their content to our control center and then monetize that to our customers or we have what we call Pixel Content Collection, where we develop our own content and we have a growing library of the, those modules on our, on our website. Um, so together, uh, we can solve the content issue because there's no way for Pixel to do that alone. So in terms of providing a safe way to, to provide access to the end users, we have a proprietary auth authentication process where once the end user has logged in and authenticated from the Pixel Hub, which resides on the standalone headsets or on a computer, the control center immediately recognizes those end users and whatever has been provisioned for them or permissioned for them from the control center, they immediately have access to that content with absolutely no sideloading needed whatsoever. It also easily integrates with a content, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an existing learning management system. Again, what we've learned from these large companies we work with is they all have LMS systems and uh, uh, learning management systems. Some are the same, some are different, but we can easily integrate with that. All the data, which is critical to figure out not only efficacy, but who's training, how often are they training, um, how are they doing, are they improving, is this content helping them? And so all the data goes back to the control center and whoever admin or whoever has access to that content uh, can, can, can view the, the uh, analytics. We support uh, all the uh, HMDs or headsets out there. It's something that um, is very difficult to do, but we know that these large companies, our existing customers are actually currently have multiple different headsets. So just a little diagram here on how the, how the platform works, the controls, the different features and functions within the different um, uh, uh, areas of, the, of, the, of Apex. Um, an admin could go in and set up organizations or groups. They can set up their users. They can manage their content all from the control center. The, the, from the uh, um, hub, the Pixel hub that's on the headset, they would, the user will access that content and push data and, and information back to the control center. The module intelligence is also extremely important for third-party developers. So they can um, use the, uh, uh, our plugin to, to integrate into their modules so we can then also distribute their content from the control center. So we believe that combining our history, the understanding of content, how to develop great content, how to engage with the end user and providing this seamless way for these large corporations in the cloud to provide access to safely and securely distribute the content and then of course manage everything through these large organizations are 
are going to solve a lot of problems in the industry. So thank you for your time. I appreciate you watching. Amazing. Um, it's, it's believed that there's a major skill gap, like a global major skill gap. And also with the <laughs> change in demand every day, from, it varies from sector to sector, industry to industry. I, I believe this should be the next level. This should be the future of, of, of training, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, not just training. And that's why when you look now at Apex, the platform that, that we've developed and the new website, that we're these large companies like, like Saudi Aramco, which is one of our clients, you know, is not just going to use VR and they're not just going to use it for training. That might be w what they're using now. But when you, when you think about buying a TV or you're buying a computer, you don't want it just for one channel or, or solving one problem of just training. So if they're investing in the equipment, they're, they're investing the resources, they're making the commitment into hardware, XR hardware, could be AR, could be VR. You know, not, VR doesn't solve every problem. But the technology is so, so great that you don't have to limit it to training. Now, would you guys rather have a here today? And I'm so excited about the impact we've been able to get from our great speakers and amazing presentations that they made. Be that as it may, it is worthy of note to know that some of the most significant contributors to the economy includes futuristic education, enhanced training programs, diversity of thoughts, and entrepreneurship. An enthusiastic investment in the fourth industrial revolution and AI technology while uploading diversity and entrepreneurship could very well trigger an economic revolution. Furthermore, it is believed that the medium of representing information has a huge impact on learning. Without doubt, it is clear that XR has the potential and is positioned to create value in the line of this thought. With the amount of knowledge retained and the rate and speed we learn cognitive experiences, I would say this is indeed the future of learning. Seeing the half-life of skills seems to be diminishing and knowledge retention seems to also be an issue of great concern. In this future of work, where education is having a hard time coping and adjusting to the current demand and rising need in the different sectors, industries and work ecosystem and where training of employees on new technologies quickly enough might be a challenge. Immersive technology is positioned to create and deliver great value and also be a defining factor for businesses in the future.